hear Thomas A. Watson tell about the events leading up to the 10th of March, 1876, when he received from Alexander Graham Bell the first telephone call ever. During the months that we were working together on his telegraph, Bell often spoke to me of another invention he had in his mind. It was the telephone. I remember my surprise when he first told me that he expected soon to be able to talk by telegraph, explaining to me his conception of an electric current that would copy the vibrations of speech. In a way, the discovery was an accident. Bell and Watson were working on a process by which to send several telegraph messages at once. Their apparatus used a number of magnets and steel reeds tuned to different pitches, which vibrated sympathetically with receiving reeds on the distant end of a wire. At one point, the reeds weren't functioning properly, and Watson struck them particularly hard, and Bell heard through the wire not just the tuned pitch of the reeds, but the overtones, the sound. This is the sound that Bell had always heard from the receiver when he was, uh, had been listening before. And this is the astonishing sound with the overtones he heard on June 2nd, 1875. <coughs> The moment Bell heard the overtones of that string, he knew he had solved the problem of talking by telegraph. Many experiments on the telephone followed, but it was not until March 10, 1876, that it transmitted its first complete sentence and proved it was a practical instrument for the everyday use of man. Bell sat in front of the new transmitter in the back room, which I had made into a laboratory for him, on the top floor of number five Exeter Place, Boston, and I went down the hall to the front room to listen for the results with a telephone receiver. But as Bell was about to speak into the new instrument, a motion of his arm upset over his clothes a battery jar of acidulated water. In the excitement of the accident, Bell called out to me, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. The big mouthpiece picked up his call for help, and I heard every word of it through the receiver at my ear. The new transmitter was better than we had expected or had dared hope. And this first sentence, ever sent through the telephone, although apparently very commonplace, was really highly significant. For the telephone today renders no service more vital than in times of emergency. And the first message it ever transmitted was unquestionably an emergency call. Forty years later, Bell and Watson were invited to join President Wilson on the first transcontinental phone call. Watson was in San Francisco. Bell was in New York. On that day, though separated by the continent, Bell and I talked to each other. I recognized the familiar tones of his voice and understood without difficulty every word he said. And even when he spoke, his voice brought clearly to me the words of that now historic first sentence, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. And fate decreed those words should be the last he ever spoke to me. Alexander Graham Bell has passed away, but his successor shall carry forward to ever greater triumphs the work which he began. And as long as man exists, the art which Bell created shall endure.